Hello everyone and welcome back. Um, we're still waiting for a couple of things to arrive and a few things to be done on the engine. Um, so we're not going to show that video this week. We're just going to show you some of the stuff we've been up to while the engine's been being done. So in the summertime, a couple that was down at the boatyard where we are um, had some what we think is Sapili hardwood uh, going spare. So they kindly gave us that so we're going to be using that to do the hatches with and um, we've ripped them down on the table saw and uh, made them to the size so yeah this is how we're going to trim the hatches out with um, just say a big thank you to Kevin Angela for uh, donating the wood and you can see what we're up to with it now the first ones we're going to do are the dinette hatches and we've actually got two that are facing each other either side of the boat first job is to um, work out the average depth of the reveal really to to work out what width wood we need because we want to try and make it slightly larger because it's tongue and groove planks on the on the wall um, some of them have got slightly different shapes so um, it's not dead straight all the way round so that's why we want to try and get an average right that's all the inside edges cut down now um, and we're just choosing what um, side we want to use because um, there's really nice dif different grains in in the wood um, and then we'll give them a good sand We've also cut the wood so it covers over that little metal lip. We don't really want to have any of the metal from the outside of the boat showing on the inside so no condensation can run onto, onto the wood. Might be a bit big still, I think. Oh no, that's it. That's just a little touch in this corner then, isn't it? Yeah. Only the smidge on that corner. Yeah. And there. Carry it out here tonight. So we just need to take out a little bit on the corner. Um, that's just really to get it over the still on the outside because the windows aren't cut exactly square they've got like a little curve in the top and because we want the wood to sit over that we just need to chop that little bit out It's a little bit clearer now what we we're talking about about taking that little groove out in the corner as you can see now that wood now will actually finish flush with the outside or the exterior of the boat there's no sort of steel sitting inside the boat at all now The adhesive I'm fitting these in with is an instant grab adhesive from a company called GSL. 
it's just off the shelf stuff from a company called in the UK called Screwfix and then I'm just using a bit of white spirit where it squows out into the steel on the outside of the boat just to remove any of the excess <laughs> We found it a lot easier to cut each piece individually rather than cut both sides at once just because there is slight differences in, in, in each measurement so this was the best way we found of doing it. I think um, on all the boat just uh, yeah. yeah just everything is maybe a fraction different yeah. from one side to the other so it is easier to do it one at a time. So just to just to get it right, right. Yeah. Just a little function more. Looks right, doesn't it? Boats are getting some advertising. Yeah. Right, that's going to go in there, can't it? Yeah. Also, all the angles can be slightly different. This is a small hatch in the bedroom. Oh, you like a painting on the wall, Aid. Picasso? Yeah. Is it Picasso? Mm. Well, I was thinking more like Mona Lisa. Yeah, yeah. Venus de Milo. Pro <laughs> yeah. Farris. Are you allowed to say that? Lovely blue sky still, but there's cloud coming. Cloud, yeah. This is a bit of a guest map. Yeah, that's. I think that's going to be too big. Yeah. But that's better than too small. Oh well, yeah. What have we done? keeping your pencil in your mouth. So there's a lot of editing. Just a little. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's plenty. Once the silver foil's off. Have you got to take any off the steel? A little this bit here. A little this bit. Because it's, it's not going to fit down that end if that's. And that's paint or the silver foil. Oh, it's getting really grey now. <laughs> Mona Lisa. Hey, Mona Lisa. So back to the workshop now and uh, going to cut the front faces down to the right thickness in my very snug, very compact, <laughs> full of off cuts of timber in the workshop. A lot of stuff that isn't ours now in there. Yeah, right? a lot of it. But yeah, just running them through this table saw to get them to the same thickness as the, as the, as the rest of the wood that's around the hatches. Decided to run a thin bead of brown frame sealant across the tops and around these edges so that when we put those front faces on it it will squeeze out and fill in any of the gaps. The facing pieces will um, fit on butted up to that inside edge and so it not only hides a million sins if the walls aren't quite straight it also uh, gives a nice profile around the edge rather than it being just like a box section yeah. rather than just being a two-sided box section around the window frame yeah we wanted to try and have some sort of, of profile it, yeah. yeah a bit of a feature yeah good words granddad thank you nanny You can use any sort of pattern to put your adhesive on. <laughs> it's just this is just my pattern of choice at the moment. <laughs> it might change, you never know. The top section is a lot narrower than the rest of the frame. Um, reason being is because we're having Roman blinds on these um, and I needed some space to put a batten uh, for the Roman blinds to attach to. And you'll see that in a, a later program. A later program? Later program, yeah, that's what. <laughs> That's, Come what on to program now. that's what we're doing now. <laughs> now a later episode where I'll, where I'll be making uh, blinds and curtains and I'll break that right down if anyone wants to have a go at doing them. Now to work out how to fill any little gaps that between the wood and the steel. I would say. Yeah. Wipe it off the. Yeah. Sand it back smooth then, can't we? We 
using the same body filler as what we used on the hatch doors if you ever saw that vlog um, it's one that you can use with uh, between wood and steel because it's got an elasticity to it rather than the one they make that's just for steel or ones that are just for wood yeah. um, it just it just sort of like allows it to expand it's got a bit of give rates. in it yeah yeah so it won't crack Once they were stuck, I just used cork around the edges. And while I was cleaning down the edges using a bit of water on a paintbrush, Nanny was in the corner practicing a strip tease. What a beautiful sunny day. Shame about the face. <laughs> so we've just got to paint the outsides now. Um, all that filler has been sanded back. Um, and while it's nice, we might as well get that all done. And it was a good job we did it because uh, the following day, it looked like this. We were back inside doing all the, the inside jobs and this is in the bedroom and we don't want any sort of uh, wood tones in the bedroom so this side hatch is going to be white so we just used a pine around the outside edge we didn't feel the need to have a um, hardwood going on to that bit because that isn't going to be exposed to the outside we wanted to use the hardwood for the inner hatches just for for it to be a bit more robust so the bedroom hatches have now had the bin undercoat and three coats of exterior satin paint um, white on the side uh, hatch but on the hatch above the bed we've gone for the lilac we've got a windowsill on on that one um, because the the depth of the wall was bigger because we put pipes behind it we've sort of used all the off cuts of the wood that we had left so that's why there's some joins in the the overhang but that overhang would go over the uh, the foam for the headboard again we've just used pine on the inside face on this one um, we've left the the top button just screwed on we haven't glued it as well because we need to get the cable tray above it down that's just there temporary at the moment that's why that's not finished off because we need to put the horn and the tunnel, light. tunnel lights and that in there <laughs> glorious morning this morning um, so hopefully we should have a good day um, we're getting all the oiling done on all the wood today so be nice that we can have the hatches open to get some fresh air using the Danish oil the same as what we used on the kitchen worktops and 
uh, we're just mixing the first couple of coats with some white spirit. Um, that is white spirit in that bottle, by the way. Um, Grandad decided to dip his blue brush inside it, so that's why we've got a blue tinge to the white spirit. I like it, better like that. <laughs> I find putting it on with a cloth, with a bit of rag, um, better than using a brush. I don't seem to get as many runs and that on it. We had a small amount of the Sapili left, just enough to use for the front of the cable trays in the dinette area. Um, the bottom of the cable tray, the piece that's underneath, that are joined from the green tongue and groove up along the bottom and then it'll come overlap. up, yeah. yeah, overlap onto the front. Um, that will be green and that will be not in Sapili. No. Um, that's why we're not too worried about the the level on the bottom. The so line, you may yeah. so you may be thinking, why have we done that one slightly lower than the frame? Yeah. It doesn't matter you because you're not going to see any of that. No. Really pleased how it turned out and what it looks like it it really goes well with the Oroco um, where the Oroco slightly got a bit more of a yellow yeah. to it and then the Sapili a bit more red it goes really well just want to get the chairs upholstered now so it all looks quite cozy there I think we just managed to catch the weather. last of the best weather for yep. this year um, to get the last coat of the blue paint around on those edges, edges of the wood of the Sapili and it's all matched in quite well so hopefully it'll last. We'll see you next year. <laughs> yeah.